Hey everyone, this is Doug and you're watching the Dev Couch. Today we're going to be talking about getting an environment set up, a Python development environment set up on Mac OS X. I'm going to assume that you all have Homebrew already installed. If you don't, it's a pretty easy setup, but in order to check, you can just type brew. It should show you uh, the usage information for brew. And then I'm also going to assume that you have Xcode installed. Uh, that'll give us all of our compilation tools. Some people choose to go with the full IDE. Some people choose to just install the compilation tools by themselves. Either way, make sure you have those things. So the first thing that we're going to do is use Brew to install Python and we'll just write brew install python. Actually, before we do that, let's make sure that python that we are using is the OSX system python. Um this one uh we don't want to we don't want to be using uh user bin python. We're going to try to install python to uh user local bin so you do want to make sure that your path is set up the way mine is here, where user local bin comes before uh, everything else. So our our, pers uh, our user installed binaries take precedence over uh, system ones and others. Uh, in order to do that, you can just go in here to bash profile and uh, you would write a line like export path equals user local bin and then append that to the rest of the or prefix the rest of the path with that i'm not going to go i'm not going to save that today cuz mine is already set up that way all right so we're going to want to brew install python and this will come with pip, which is a package manager specifically for Python packages, as well as setup tools. So it's some pretty verbose output you'll see from this. Um, yours will be a little bit longer than mine if you don't have pip and setup tools already installed, but I do because I've tried this tutorial. Uh, I've tried recording this a number of times already. Right, so it's just telling me that Python's been installed, but we already had uh, pip and setup tools. Okay, so the next thing we want is if we go into a project like uh, the one I'm in right now, I'm in my project directory for a dinosaur game that I'm working on, and I've got my requirements.txt file. That's just a list of my dependencies um, normally what we'd do is write pip install dash r and then requirements.txt to get all of our requirements, but we don't want to run that until we know that these requirements aren't going to be installed globally. And the reason for that is that different projects have different requirements, different dependencies, and sometimes you, you'll, you might have the same dependency uh, between two different projects. Uh, but just need different versions of the same dependency. So we want our uh, dependencies to be installed on a per project basis. And for that, we're going to use virtual env. Uh, virtual env is available on pip, and it's as simple as writing pip install virtual env. And this one we do want to be installed globally. So write pip install virtual env. Uh, your output again will be different than mine. Uh, as I've already installed virtual env. So I'm going to move right on to how we start using it. There's two ways that people commonly use uh, virtual env, and one of them is to just uh, use it right inside the project directory. So in order to create a virtual environment, you'll use the virtual env command followed by the name of a directory that you want to store uh, your virtual your dependencies in. 
and I, I typically call mine Venv. So what we've done here now is created a directory called Venv. That's where our uh, de project dependencies will be installed. And then what I typically do to keep that out of other people's way is just add it to my git ignore file, assuming that you're uh, using git as your source control. So I just add that directory in there. And if, if anyone wants to use the other method, uh, they can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about it right now. So the other way that we do it is we can create a directory elsewhere where we store all of our virtual environments. So I'll make one now called virtual ends, and I'm just storing this in my home directory. And then we can go in here and do the same exact thing, except this time we might call it something that has to do with our project. So in my case, I'll call it dinosaur. So I'll create a new virtual env called dinosaur. So among all my projects, I can uh, keep all my virtual env's in this directory if I wanted to, or I typically go the route of keeping uh, the virtual env directory inside the project folder. In either case, what we'll do to uh, choose which virtual environment we're uh, using is run the activate script in underneath the uh, virtual env directory. So I'll go under here under dinosaur and then uh, the rest of the path is bin activate. And so we'll see a little indication here that we're using the dinosaur virtual env. So then I would go back to my project and uh, I can freely install now my dependencies. So let's take a look at what I'm installing. So there's my list of dependencies, obviously nothing to do with a dinosaur game. And to be frank, there is no game. Um, but we want to install these requirements under the dinosaur virtual env. So now we're free to go ahead and write pip install dash r requirements.txt. And this will install for us a local project only, project specific copy of all these dependencies. And they'll be installed under that dinosaur directory uh, under my home directory, under virtual ends under my home directory. Um, once we're done uh, playing with this project and we want to get rid of or, or stop using this virtual env, we can write deactivate. And then whenever I come back to the dinosaur project again later, I'll just do the same thing, uh, activate that, that virtual environment. So it's under virtual env's dinosaur bin activate. And then we're back in business. All the dependencies are still there. <clears throat> so that's that. And that should cover everything you need to just get a rudimentary start working with Python on OS X. If I've missed anything, let me know in the comments. Uh, subscribe to my channel. I'll be putting more videos out there. And I'll try to do it on a recurring basis. Thanks.